a spay that's not a spay that's potentially healthier and safer for your dog? Find out what you need to know in this video. This is Dr. Andrew Jones. If you've yet to do so, I encourage you to get a copy of my free book. You can click the link in the box below for more information. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, glad to be back after being away. I'm currently dog sitting for the day. So Pipster is gonna star in today's video. But you just gotta see what Tula is doing because as soon as you pay attention to someone else, she's like, no, 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 look at me. Paying attention to Pippi. <gasps> nice Pippi, oh. And then guess who gets jealous? Yes, little poodle. Yes, as you can see. Uh, Louis is not sharing. At least she doesn't like to sh share her own her parent or whatever I am with her. Okay, yes. She's so strong. <laughs> so what am I talking about? A spay that's not a spay. Um, it's otherwise known as uh, an ovarian um, saving or sparing surgery, otherwise sometimes known as a partial spay. So what it means would be taking a dog, such as a female dog, Pippi, and we're doing a hysterectomy in terms of re removing the uterus, but we're not removing the ovaries. For a male dog, it would mean that we're leaving the testicles, but we're removing the vas deferens, you know, sound like equivalent to what a person would get a vasectomy of which I have direct personal experience with. The big question is why? Like, why would you do such a thing? All the big benefits of spaying and neutering? I'm sure you've heard it a zillion times on TV, Bob Barker, you name it. Hundreds of veterinarians. I must have said it a thousand times. Have I been wrong? The big pros, right? We're removing the source of the cancers. So as soon as you remove the ovaries, you remove the testicles, you remove the source of those sex hormones, um, which can play a direct role on our dogs having incidents of mammary gland cancer, obviously ovarian cancer, and the other uh, specific sex hormone related cancers. Likewise with the male dogs having testic testicular cancer, uh, prostate disease, prostate cancer. Makes big sense, right? Like, I mean, that's what we've been saying for, I don't know, feels like a hundred years. The thing is, there are a whole host of now sort of known health issues that can result because we've removed those sex hormones. You know, these female dogs getting this urinary incontinence, so common. A you know, young, spayed female dog, such as Pippi, she's leaking urine. We've removed her ovaries, her source of their sex hormones. These guys gain more weight, incidents with obesity. Some of the musculoskeletal issues, like hip dysplasia, right? Higher incidence of hip dysplasia once your dog has been spayed or neutered. Or the horrible like knee injury, cranial cruciate ligament disease, right? We're like weakening the ligaments, we're altering growth, makes sense. We've moved those sex hormones, estrogen, testosterone, more ACL injuries. But then there's a whole host of other issues. And these are just some of them. Uh, increased incidence of bladder stones. Allergic skin disease or atopy, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, Addison's disease or hypodrenocorticism, diabetes mellitus, uh, hypothyroid disease, cognitive dysfunction, and even some behavioral issues. All that from being spayed or neutered. Seems kind of crazy that we've never really known or documented it, but clearly it has been. And we're just increasingly becoming aware of it now and thinking about, you know, alternative options. So exactly how is this happening? It's all because of this, this pituitary gland. So that pituitary gland is located deep at the base of the brain. Me, you, Pippi, Tula, uh, the rest of our dogs and cats, most mammals. And what it's doing is it's secreting a couple different hormones. One primary one is called LH or luteinizing hormone, also called FSH. And they're part of a feedback loop. So they would, you know, tell the testicles to produce more testosterone. They would tell you know, the ovaries um, to produce more you know, specific sex hormones, be it progestogen or estrogen. When they're removed via a ovary hysterectomy, ovarial hysterectomy, you remove, including removing the ovaries, you've done a neuter, you've removed the testicles, there's no longer part of that feedback loop. So then what's happening is that we have you know, continual elevated levels of LH, for instance, 
responsible for a whole host of those issues that we just mentioned. And it sort of makes sense, right? You've got all these hormones that are sort of interdependent, pretty complex web that's going on in our animals' bodies. We're removing those, and yeah, conceptually makes sense. Like obviously we're really messing up with their, their whole hormonal system, resulting in like some big problems. So hearing all that, what should you do? Should you be concerned or not? Should you be discussing this with your veterinarian? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think at the very least, consider some of those specific uh, growth issues related to hip dysplasia, relating to uh, dogs having ACL injuries. If you, if you can, you know, consider at least delaying uh, the spay or neuter until two years of age, your dogs have matured. You're being a responsible dog or cat owner and you're making sure that your animals are not out there, you know, reproducing. I mean, there's a whole point of us really advocating for spay and neuter. We saw this big dramatic reduction in animals, you know, being relinquished to animal shelters. You went from a high of 13 million animals sort of in the 70s uh, to its less, you know, I think it's about a third of that today. Is a partial spay an option? You bet it is, uh, which is something I would be considering now while we're still practicing. Uh, is a vasectomy an option? You bet it is once again. It's a little bit a lot easier than just doing yeah, a complete neuter. And there are some real big potential benefits. Uh, so we want to be discussing this as well, you know, with your veterinarian and you know, documenting some of the concern effects, the health issues that we're seeing, and you know, really kind of sort of balancing out. Yes, you want to be responsible and you want to want to make sure your dog is not you know, reproducing, your cat's not reproducing irresponsibly, but at the same time, you're taking into account those potential health issues and you know, maybe kind of get the best of both worlds, right? You've got a partial spay, you've got a vasectomy, something I'm really thinking about for my next dog or cat. Thank you so much for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets. If you've yet to do so, I encourage you to get a copy of my free book. You can click the link in the box below for more information.